Good morning, everybody. Um, typically, when you look at adoption of IoT and digital, especially in an industrial context, um, we tend to start with strategy. And yeah, that's on the left-hand side, as you, can, as you can see here. But what is extremely critical to get right is the journey from strategy to execution. Progressively seeing, uh, you know, you've seen a lot of our clients uh, in the marketplace start to use proof of concepts, um, start to do a lot of projects as well. But what is very critical, like I, like I was just telling you, is the key to jump from strategy to execution and to bridge this gap. Based on our learnings and experiences, uh, what we've observed is that <clears throat> it's actually a simple transition. And the transition should be in, in the form of making sure it's not a technical implementation or a technology implementation. And going back to what Charles was saying, what Dr. Vivian was saying earlier, if you start to notice that, if you start to migrate from looking at it from a technical and a technology transformation into a business transformation and a people transformation, you will make that migration much smoother. And in the next 20 minutes, we figure the best way to actually explain this to you is through a live, true, and a happening case study right now with one of our leading client journeys, RGE. And in RGE, we've gone the whole nine yards. We've actually started with strategy. Uh, we did the execution, the process enablement, the people enablement, as well as all this at, at scale that you know, is quite unparalleled that you're going to witness in the next uh, 20 minutes. And I also want to tell you that it took the designers and myself quite some time to get the angle of this elephant right here, uh, especially to make sure that the leap from strategy to execution was right. Uh, and hopefully in the next 20 minutes, you would see that the elephant did land safely, too. Um, having said that, why don't I give you uh, three key reasons why we chose this for you today. Three unique reasons why we chose this. Number one was that this is happening in a groundbreaking industry, in forestry and agriculture. Typically, the outlook on a forestry and agriculture industry is it's, it's an extremely traditional outlook there. And technology is not of much use. And the second important thing is that the scale with which these, uh, the forestry operates is extremely high. And, and we're going to show that to you. And the reason why this, this is really a groundbreaking industry from an IoT perspective. The second important thing is that the focus is right here in Singapore. This work was done here in ASEAN, in Singapore, and in Indonesia which I think uh, is, is one other important thing, and we should all be very extremely proud of it as well. And the third thing is that this has now given our GE a leapfrogging capability. And uh, when I mean leapfrogging, they're starting to create a distinctive competitive advantage for themselves in actually doing this as well. Um, why don't we do this? To set the stage and the context, I'm going to roll a video for you to show you about our GE, its operations, and, uh, and we'll take it from there. The concept of IoT is actually not very new to me. Because back in the mid-90s, uh, the US military was already talking about the revolution in military affairs. Fighting wars on the systems of system approach. The Singapore Armed Forces also started down that road. And this has led to the transformation of the SAF to be a 3G SAF today. We were pioneers in leveraging IoT to address mission-critical needs such as enabling faster real-time decision-making, ensuring greater precision and accuracy. However, the IoT has evolved over time. First of all, we have given it a name, IoT. And there are 2,500 of us discussing this today. On a more serious note, let's see what's the differences. Those days in the, in the 80s, the hardware like sensors, servers and infrastructure were a lot more expensive. And you needed really qualified software engineers and specialists. Application was also mostly in the military realm. Today we have the two A's, availability, affordability, uh, let me go back one slide. Availability and affordability. Good quality commercial cameras, drones and mobile devices, bigger cloud computing power and bigger bandwidth are readily available at very affordable prices. Even amateurs can create apps without too much difficulties. The components of IoT are present today. The question is how do we the business put them together to create a competitive advantage 
for ourselves. Let me move on to tell you how we apply it in our business in the context of Royal Golden Eagle. This is our pulp and paper business. Essentially, you know, we grow trees from nurseries and we plant them and we maintain them. And at every five years, we harvest them mechanically and we transport them to the pulp and paper mill. And then we export it to the customers. So the tree business, tree-based business is very renewable. Our scale of operation covers about a million hectares. That's about 13 times the size of Singapore. And it's not all together, it's all dispersed and scattered. So the scale of operations is really quite huge. We only plant about half of that concession. The other half are conserved as forests. In the process, we created 90,000 jobs in the region. And this is a deliberate uh, uh, move from a company to engage the local community to be our contractors, to be our workers. Bottom line is that our products are mostly commodities. We are price taker. Profitability depends fundamentally on being cheaper, better, and faster for the customer. We achieve that through lean transformation and digital transformation working together. Let's see what this means to the forestry perspective. Land productivity or yield management is key to profitability. Therefore, we want zero mortality, which means planting the seedlings well and keeping it free from pests and disease. Trees can also be destroyed by fires. So we have a no-burn policy in our concession and we invest heavily to prevent and suppress fires that come from outside. With maximum land productivity, optimum manpower planning and deployment, manpower planning and deployment, and efficient logistic and supply chain, we can be one of the lowest cost producer of pulp and paper in the world. How do we leverage IoT in this process? In the context of IoT that would transform the future of a forestry and also the future of work at RGE, there are three I's that will help us achieve maximum land productivity, labor productivity, and equipment productivity. These are information, intelligence, and intervention. Information is gathered very quickly through the integration of sensors using human as well as drones and data collection using mobile devices. The big data from the cloud is then processed through analytics to convert information into intelligence which produce a recognized situation picture. With availability of decision support applications, we can intervene with follow-up actions instructions that are quicker and more precise through the same mobile devices. In the military parlance, it is called shorter sensor to shooter decision cycle and one shot, one kill accuracy. Let me give an ex simple example to illustrate this. After we plant the seedlings, we will take a picture of the area after about two months. And through analytics, we can see where the young trees have died. The locations and the number of seedlings required are then sent to the ground supervisors who will then go with his workers to the specific sites to replant. The old ways of walking the ground to identify the mortality to replanting would have taken many, many more days. Digital transformation. For us, it's not about technical implementation. It is not about building many apps. It's about leveraging IoT to transform our processes and ways of working. I see us going through three stages of the three S. Substitution, structural change, and then scaling up. The first stage of substitution is using technology to replace manual processes. That is essential part of change management, to create comfort of the workers with the devices. The pervasive availability of such devices has helped this process greatly. The second stage is to move from substitution to structure, using lean principles and tools to eliminate waste and non-value-add steps in a process. There is really no point spending money to digitize waste. In the process, we conduct gamba or going down to the ground 
to verify the data integrity. Finally, we create standard work to enable discipline execution, which now en enables the scalability and hence further reduce the implementation costs. In the implementation of IoT, it's critical to know that there are specific challenges as well. With information literally available at your fingertips, senior management may tend to over-micromanage, making decisions which are best left to the ground supervisors. This, is often, this often leads to frustration for the ground supervisors and is not the best way to develop our people. Also in the IoT environment, data integrity becomes a lot more critical and walking the ground more frequently and not less becomes more important. The good thing about IoT is that with the mobile devices, we know precisely whether the ground supervisors and even the senior management are walking the ground. In spite of these challenges, I believe that the IoT journey has been significantly rewarding. On that note, I will hand you over to Sen, who will touch on the technical aspects of our IoT journey. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bay. <coughs> Thank you very much. What I'm going to quickly uh, walk you through next is um, some of the outcomes that we, we went through in this journey. And, and as, as we're telling you this, this is a live journey as well. So when you, when you look at it, we fly drones today, and uh, we cover around 80,000 hectares uh, in every two months. So, and 80,000 hectares is roughly the size of Singapore, just, just in terms of uh, you know, the, the physical nature of uh, how much we drive the drones on. Um, and after we do that, uh, we analyze over 6,000 different variables. And these are anything from seed IDs, soil, weather, uh, drone conditions, imagery, et cetera, that are, that are analyzed. It takes us to around five terabyte in a full-time operation at any point in time. And again, I'm talking about a forestry industry here. So when you, when you compare it, it is, it is quite sizable. The next important thing is that Mr. B mentioned a very important point about substitution and about scaling after you make structural changes. So there were 250 business metrics that were impacted over this process. And these are, these are extremely important because it's the way in which the operations run in the April business as well. Over 150 field estate supervisors and folks at the field level are impacted by this today. So they use this on, as the DNA in which their operations run today as well. And if you look at all of this the, from an outcome perspective, the speed to insight right now is close to around two hours and with a 90% insight accuracy as well. When you, when, you, when you see this. And what is more important, and, and again, we take pride in saying this, is because this work happens out of Singapore. The data scientists are right here in Singapore, and it happens out of our, our center of excellence uh, for IoT as well. But given this context, you know, we've had our fair share of uh, kind of learnings um, and, um, and, and also a lot of successes. Let me start with the top box here. Um, you know that in any program of which, which involves business transformation, again, I go back to that, um, is that the sponsorship is extremely critical. And uh, you witness the commitment the past 12 minutes with uh, none less than the vice chairman right here talking about it. So you can see that the commitment we got from our GE leadership and the April leadership from day one was extremely high. But at the same time, it is equally, if not more important, to have the folks at the field level empowered. So if you notice this, this is a cultural change as well. So when we go back to this whole concept of IoT, and we say the migration is not on the technology side, but it's truly on the people side, on the change side, and the business enablement side. It is extremely critical. There were over 25 different workshops that were conducted in local language as well as in English to make sure that they understood what we were going through and the transformation. And mind you, this happened in some very interesting parts of the forestry, which the team and I had a pleasure to visit as well. And you all should visit a forestry sometime. Um, the next thing is um, IoT is the team sport. We know that it's impossible to do this journey without uh, a set of strong ecosystem partners. And you see the ecosystem partners there. Each and every one got something very special and unique in, on the board. And, um, and the reason why this was very successful as well. Uh, digital connectivity is very interesting. In fact, we could have a whole 20-minute session separately as a keynote on just connectivity in a forest. Uh, because we learned a lot of lessons. Now, Anderson, uh, Charles Anderson just talked about it just before us now. And he mentioned that one of the key stumbling blocks or barriers uh, for adoption of IoT is around capital expenditure and CAPEX. We urge that we don't stop IoT projects because of that. 
we urge that you start to look at experimenting with innovative ideas in a forestry. In a forestry, for example, we put many different wireless options and Wi-Fi options to make it work. In fact, the first thing we did was we rented it and leased it first to make sure it worked. So you could start as, as low as that and then finally complete the whole situation with a, a full connectivity option in a digital forestry as well. And um, my, my other, uh, probably a humorous note here, is that if it can work in a forestry, I, I believe it should work uh, elsewhere too. So let's go try it out. So let's not say Capex is, is stopping us from doing an IoT adoption. The next interesting learning lesson, and, and we see this every time we interact with Mr. Bay and the leadership team of April, when we started this engagement, we started this engagement by putting a central command center in Kerinchi, which is where their headquarters is, uh, for, the, for the operations. And we created a control room. And uh, what you see there is, is a control room uh, as well. And we put in all the alerts and everything that they need to have to take the two-hour insight that I talked to you earlier. But what happened over the past months right now, and this is six months now, is that they actually go to that room only twice in a week. And why is that? Is it a good thing or a bad thing? It's an excellent thing, actually, according to us, because the business uptake is right now at the field level. So the, the folks in the field, the 150 folks that I talked to you about in the previous chart, are now taking the decisions at the estate level. And they are empowered to take those decisions, which means that the central command center is becoming only an intervention engine whenever it's needed. And to us, that's a great way of adding value and the business uptake in an, in an engagement of, uh, of this size. Uh, with that, let me just tell you that a, this project wouldn't have been possible uh, without uh, some of the project heroes here. Uh, and I want to highlight uh, the camera against uh, the he heroes who are standing there. Uh, in fact, we've got the whole skid there, a plantation model along with the drone. We were told we can't fly the drone on top of you. Uh, we wanted to uh, try that, so we came in here to set up, et cetera. Uh, but given security, uh, we, want to <laughs> we want to at least make sure that uh, you know, the camera is highlighted against the project heroes without whom uh, this would not have been uh, successful uh, as well. And uh, we are going to be spending quite a bit of time in the IoT uh, booths downstairs. So we'd be very happy to chat with you about this project and our learnings and our successes along with you and see where you are in this, in this journey as well. Um, given that, I also want to thank Mr. Bay and the RG leadership for pioneering this, uh, for being a leader in, in, in a technology and in a business transformation of this size and, and scale, and IoT Asia for having this forum to bring all of us together because I think we are on a path where we don't have to be followers of IoT. We can be the leaders here in Asia in this topic. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.